Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on momentum and collisions. The topic of this video is thinking proportionally about collisions. And here's what we wish to learn today. How do you use proportional reasoning and momentum conservation to predict the after collision velocity for two objects involved in a hit and stick collision? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the law of momentum conservation, which states that in any collision occurring in an isolated system, the total amount or combined momentum of the system is conserved. It remains unchanged. If we look at this animation between a truck colliding with a car, we observe that before the collision, the truck has 60,000 units of momentum and the car has zero. We would say the system has a total momentum of 60,000 units. But after the collision, the truck does not have its same momentum. It has lost momentum, and it has 45,000 units of momentum, and the car has 15,000 units of momentum. But when you combine that momentum, you get a total of 60,000 units of momentum. We can say that in this collision, the truck loses momentum, the car gains momentum, but the total or combined momentum of these two objects remains unchanged changed. And that's what we mean by momentum is conserved in a collision. In this video, we're going to learn a new trick for thinking about collisions. We'll think proportionally or in terms of ratios. This trick will work whenever you have a collision that meets these two requirements. That before the collision, only one object is moving, the other is at rest. And after the collision, both objects move together at the same speed a collision we call a hit and stick collision. As an example, consider the collision of a small fish with mass m colliding with a big fish with mass 4m. You'll notice the small fish slows down and then the big fish speeds up. Before the collision, all the, ma all the momentum is in that little fish's mass. After the collision, the amount of mass that shares all that momentum is m plus 4m or 5m. We would say that in this collision, the amount of mass that is moving is increased by a factor of 5. And in order to keep momentum the same, the speed at which all that mass is moving must decrease by a factor of 5. In order for momentum to be conserved, you have to think about it like this. If the amount of mass is increased, then the, amount, the speed at which that mass is moving must be decreased. And the ratio by which the mass is increased is equal to the ratio by which the speed is decreased. We'll learn how to use this principle as we go through several examples. In this first example, we're going to look at a collision between a diesel engine and a flat car. We know that the mass of the diesel engine is 8,000 kilograms, and the flat car is 2,000 kilograms. Before the collision, all of the momentum is concentrated in that 8,000 kilogram diesel. It's moving at 5 kilometers per hour. But after the collision, there's more mass moving, because now it's the flat car plus the diesel moving. That's 10,000 kilograms of mass. What we could say is that 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 the amount of mass that is moving has increased by a factor of 5 fourths or 1.25. Simply take the after collision mass and divide it by the before collision mass that's moving. 10,000 divided by 8,000 is 1.25 or 5 fourths. In order for momentum to be conserved, the speed at which all this increased mass is moving must decrease by 4 fifths. It must be 4 fifths of the original speed that it had. So we take the 5 kilometers and we divide by 1.25 or multiply by 4 fifths and we get 4 kilometers per hour. We're going to see more examples. Stay tuned. So the trick that we're learning could be summarized like this, that in one of these types of hit and stick collisions, the factor by which the mass increases is equal to the factor by which the speed decreases. We're going to use this principle to analyze a several hit and stick collisions for a little fish being captured by a big fish. And before the collision, in each case, the little fish will have a speed of 120 centimeters per second. In our first example, we have the little fish with mass m being caught by the big fish with mass 3m. And in this situation, the amount of mass that is moving has increased by a factor of 4 from m to m plus 3m or 4m. So because the mass is increased by a factor of 4, the speed will decrease by a factor of 4. So we're going to use 4 as the dividing factor and take 120 and divide it by 4 and we end up getting 30 centimeters per second. In our second example, we have the little fish mass m and the big fish mass 4m. So after the collision, the amount of mass that's moving is m plus 4m 
or 5m. The amount of mass that's moving has increased by a factor of 5. So the speed at which it is moving will decrease by a factor of 5. I'll use 5 as the dividing factor. Starting with 120, divide it by 5, and I get 24 centimeters per second. In the last example, it's a fish of mass m colliding with a big fish of mass, mass 5m. So the amount of mass that is moving has increased by a factor of 6 from m to m plus 5m. And because it has increased by a factor of 6, I'm going to take 120 and divide it by 6 to get 20 centimeters per second. Here's three very similar problems. We have a red cart that's moving at 60 centimeters per second, and it collides with a stationary blue cart. And after the collision, the red cart, blue cart move at the same speed. And if we look at the rows of the table going from row to row to row, we see that the mass of the blue cart is changing. What you have to figure out is what is the new speed of this blue cart, red cart combo. To do it, you have to use proportional reasoning. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and fill in this table and find out what the last column values are for the speed after the collision. And then press play and you'll see the answers. If you do need to have a video guided explanation of the answers, look in the description section of this video. I'll leave a short video that explains the answers of this. When you're done, you can move forward and you can watch the remainder of the video in which there's an action plan and also some more difficult questions. Good luck to you. And here are your answers. Here's a similar situation with a red cart moving at 60 centimeters per second before a collision with a stationary blue cart. And together, they, st they stick together and they move with one speed after the collision. And we have to fill in this table right here in which we ultimately indicate the final speed of the two carts after the collision. So what makes this a little more difficult is that the multiplying and dividing factors that you see in, in these two rows here, two, two columns, are not going to be whole numbers. Because when 2m hits m, you end up with 2m plus m moving. That's the 3m. So the final mass that's moving is 3m, and the initial was 2m, and the multiplying factor on mass is therefore 3 divided by 2, or 1.5. So I'm going to find I'm going to use that 1.5 as the dividing factor on speed. I take my 60, I divide by 1.5, and I end up getting 40 centimeters per second. Now in the next row, it's 3m hits m. After the collision, it's 4m that is moving. F the multiplying factor is 4 divided by 3. I take 4m divided by 3m. And that's 1.3333 as my multiplying factor. So it becomes the dividing factor on speed. Start with 60 and divide by 1.3333, you end up getting 45 centimeters per second. Now in the last row, 3m hits 2m, so that after the collision, the amount of mass that's moving is 3m plus 2m, and that's 5m. So the multiplying factor on mass is 5 divided by 3, or 1.666 repeating. So to find the final speed, I have to use that 1.66 repeating as my dividing factor. I start with 60, and I divide by 1.6666 repeating, and I end up getting 36 centimeters per second. If you found this video helpful, could you give us a like, subscribe to the channel, or leave a question or comment in the comment section down below. Now for an action plan, a series of next steps for helping make the learning stick. These three resources are from our website, and you will find links to each one in the description section of this video. There's a simulation, a concept builder, and a tutorial page, any one of which would help further your learning. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thanks for watching.